morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 457. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to review the questions and uh, answers given on the uh, um, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have David Razam. David uh, is a leading internet marketer. He's based in uh, West Sussex in the sunny UK. And um, you can find David at uh, chameleonmarketing.com. No, I DavidRosen.com. What is it? DavidRosen.com. Ah, DavidRosen.com. Okay. And. Uh, we have also Tim Kappa, not too far away, but 100 miles north of uh, David is Tim Kappa in the UK. Tim uh, is a Google product expert uh, in uh, the Google My Business uh, community. You can find Tim at onlineownership.com. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's based in uh, Wimbledon. Um, not not too, not not too far from David or, or Tim, and Masataki is a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. All right, uh, let's um, have a look at our questions tonight, and uh, let me click to the first one. Uh, this one is from Jack in Mathis. Um, uh, he says, I have 50 products distributed in five categories. That's the title. He said, my brand name is ABCD Private Limited. I have 50 products distributed in five categories. Now, I am planning to, to create a separate domain on different hosting of category-wise, like abcdbags.com, abcdtoys.com. So that whatever products I have in ABCD bags, etc., that product will also be there in my main site. It sounds like a recipe for disaster to me. Um, he said, I'm promoting my main site and separate domain worldwide. So is it a good strategy as per Google? That's probably the worst thing I've ever heard. Oh, well, I'm sure we've heard worse. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, no, actually, you probably have. Um, no, you've got a brand that sells 50 products. Uh, market it. Like, oh, yeah, I just don't get how you would do them in all these different domains. Like, are you planning on thinning them out? So, like let's say out of those 50 you've got let's say five categories so abcd bags what has 10 products on it like that's going to be a pretty weak site then you need to create all the content around just on bags right just for that side then abcd toys again 10 products and then you've got to create all your content around that for that one side um no it's just a bad plan you know have your have your site get all of them you know uh, all your all those products are, are you know lovely images great descriptions i don't know what they do if it's a obviously a toy um there's some nice uh 360 video of it on the on the on the on the product page and then you can have categories on on your on your let's say your blog or your news or call it um uh, you know product product uh, product info and it splits it all up nicely and that's where you put your content and it all works nicely together um having all these different things for 10 products you know if and then another five sites to manage maintain um build all the content on it's just it's just a recipe for disaster 
Yeah. Any more? Oh, just to reiterate everything that Tim said, um, just make it simple. Um, whenever someone comes up with the, uh, whenever someone floats the idea of multiple sites, you've got to have a really good strategic reason to have them because you're making, you're making work for yourself. Um, doing what we do, um, digital marketing, SEO, whatever you want to call it, content marketing is a lot of damned work. So don't multiply it by setting up extra sites. You've got to maintain them. You've got extra content. You've got more chance of something going wrong. Oh, horrible, horrible, horrible thought. No, don't do it. Okay. And is that all we have? Okay. Um, I'm going to take that as a yes, and let's move on to the next. Uh, just bear with me. All right. Um, this one um, is uh, from George Melford. Uh, it's titled, Do I Need Backlinks to Rank? Um, he start, started off saying, a very dumb SEO question incoming. My site is indexed, but not ranking. It has no backlinks. Do I need backlinks to rank? Um, the keywords are very low, low, um, I don't know what that comp means. Okay. It's, I, I read it as low camp to begin with, but I, I thought, no, it's not low camp, it's low comp. Yeah, competition. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you don't need, uh, you don't need backlinks, particularly if you've got low competition keywords we won't go into what uh, low competition is and whether you can measure it and whether it's meaningful um, it's very obvious what low competition is um, so I'm not bothered about it so um, as a concept um, yeah I, I you've you've got to spend some time with your with your content um, make your content better than the other guys and make sure that your website is is working reasonably well and it's spiderable and it's spitting out pages quickly um yeah um don't worry about the, the backlinks just just get in there and prevent and prevent <laughs> and create um some wonderful content or at least somewhat better than the other guys Okay, anybody else? All right, uh, let's move on to number three on our run list. Um, this one from Jason Wells, it's titled uh, um, Quick Question About Toxic Backlinks. Um, Jason said, hi guys, a quick question about toxic backlinks. Under what circumstances should we remove backlinks due to toxic toxicity? Uh, are there any decent guides on toxic auditing? Uh, of course, any ideas from you guys would be great, but eventually I heard it's rare to work, a, a, to work about um, toxic link removal. Um, it's, she is okay so who told you what they, they're toxic so you've 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 got some kind of thing and it's um telling you these are all toxic and blah 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 blah. right literally if you didn't create them right you didn't go out and buy some absolute junk blogs i don't know comment links then then it's fine mate because google will see those and understand it all right I've got one um, one site, I think, uh, Semrush, which is the tool I use, sends me probably a weekly update going, take action now, toxic backlinks. I think it's like, uh, I think I'm looking at just short of a million now. Um, I think over 800 domains, blah, 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 blah. 
Uh, I've never disavowed, never touched. I never created them. These are just crap from, uh, this is a very image-based site. So it comes from, you know, just crap people sharing the images, blah, 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 um, into all sorts of different crap. Uh, Chinese sites, which for some reason, like take the image, which then creates a link and then they don't put anything on the page. Uh, it's just, it's just complete rubbish. But it's a pattern that Google can, can see because it builds over time, they can see it and the site does well, it's never dropped. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Google is handling that kind of rubbish. On the flip side, if you created them, now this is something for you to think about. If you created those, um, you and then you disavow them right now your site has never been penalized it's never had some kind of dramatic drop things like this right um when you submit a disavow file you are telling google what you've done and the shit you've done right and that they could also be thinking about it from the point of view that you are disavowing all these things and it's like, you know, they don't know whether you actually were a naughty boy and, 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 and paid someone on Fiverr to create this crap. So as long as if your site is fine and your site is not um, suffering in any way, shape or form, for the love of God, stay away from a disavow file. Yeah, good advice, Tim. Anybody else? Okay, let's move on. And we are now at um, number four on our run list. Uh, Jaden Sherry is uh, the, the name of this one. And the title is Google could not determine the prominent video on the page. Um, and Jade and Sherry goes on to, to ask, can anyone let me know how to get Google to see the videos as prominent uh, on all of the posts to get them counted as video pages? Google says video is supplementary content on the page. See screenshot. Um, I understand that it could be because there's a header, um, because there's a podcast audio player and because there's copy on the page. Um, let me see the scroll. Um, one, do you think I can just move the rest of the content further down? Does content need to be removed or should I shorten it or remove the top section or something else? Uh, the client wants the um, audio player on the post pages, but should I insist on removing the audio player? Three, if they rank as audio, video pages, maybe it'll negatively affect organic ranking. Is it even worth um, worth it? I assume it is for them to rank as video pages. Uh, any input is welcome. Uh, the latest sample post, and I'm not going to try and read that one. Okay, how about it, guys? Um. Isn't this a uh, a schema um, issue? Um, schema's not mentioned anywhere here. Um, so, and scrolling down, I see Richard has talked about schema at great length, and I'm sure he's much more knowledgeable than I am about this issue. Yep. Yep. He's had a look at the page and he says that there's um there's schema from rank math, but it doesn't feature video. And he goes on to suggest how you might put some video schema in there. Yeah, video schema is super simple. You don't need to plug in. Um I chuck it on when a client does a little intro to uh, what is 
the, the main one, boilers. So he's like, does a quick thing on how to rate range a boiler. Um, so the video is like, I don't know, eight minutes long. Um, and then you embed that on the thing, you give a brief description about the, the video, um, blah, 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 blah. Of course, they're a training center. So then you provide some other details, but specifically about that kind of course. And then you just embed the schema, like literally in HTML. Um, it's a piece of piss. Um, and yeah, um, it doesn't always give you a featured video just for your reference. Um, it, it definitely doesn't. Um, in more obscure ones, like let's say where there's obviously a little bit more thing to play with where not every Tom, Dick and Harry has created a video on it. Yes, you do get the featured video for the, the, the query search. Um, but where you've got um, a more, where more people have done things, then you may be number one, but out of the pack of three. I don't know if you've seen them. It's if there's more and more, like it'll do the pack of three. So it doesn't guarantee it, hey, definitely. Okay, anybody else? Right, um, next one is um, number five on our run list. Damien Kelly uh, asked a question titled, is it fair to ask what work has been done from your SEO agency? As a customer, is it fair to ask? And uh, he goes on to say, I have newly started on a rolling monthly contract and am happy with the trend from the first month. However, I'm keen to know what has actually been done at, at the end of each month, e even just a, a rough uh, overview. Uh, is this fair to ask um, for, from your point of view? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely fair. But bear in mind, like, so um, I've reached a level of trust with my clients where they don't ask me what I've done. You know, they get the report, they can see things are moving, they can see things are happening. Um, the thing is, if you're now asking me, like, I, I tend to be very tight with my pricing. If you now want lists on what I've done, there's two points here. It's like, in my mind, when someone asks us is one, do I have enough billable hours for that? How neat and tidy do you want this? Because if you want it in something nice and neat and tidy, where I'm going to need uh, whatever and stuff like this, um, that cost, it's going to cost. Um, that's my time that now you know um like but in in my basic you know when i send a report i do give them a okay this has happened we've had an update we had this check in this report you can see that this is slightly dropped but we've gained on this i believe it's because of this and for the next month i'm going to play around and do something with xyz so i do give ideas on what like what are you looking at what I think there may be something where I can, you know, uh, that I need to look at, and that's what I'm going to be spending the following month on. Um, so for them to then say, well, what did you do? It's like, oh, okay. So like, I'm literally going to uh, work through 52 product pages. Uh, to, it's, it's like, it's just a waste of my time. So, and, 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 and it's going to mean nothing to them in that sense. So perhaps if you like, I mean, you should be getting an idea on what they're doing. Like they should be splitting out their tasks for you. Um, month one, we are literally going to go through this entire site. Month two is now we're stable. We need to wait for uh, to see how the changes are reflected whilst working on XYZ content pieces, breaking and splitting it up. Um, we need to, you've got zero content on this and that's one of your key products. We need to work on that. 
copywriters, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. You know, you should have some kind of ballpark, but like month to month, yeah, that would just be a pain in my ass. I would, I personally, I'd end up firing you. Because like, there has to be a level of trust. I've already broken down how it's going to be happening, what work's going to be happening. You get a monthly report where I tell you where I think things are improving, where things haven't gone to plan. I'm going to spend more time on X, Y, Z. That should be enough for you because you see things happening. Um, if you wanted me to break down every month what I've done, um, that would boil my ass. Yeah, honestly, that would. But it's fair. You can ask it. Some people are happy to do it, but I'm at a stage and a point uh, where I don't, I don't need that ass ache. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, can, can we? Okay. Sorry, go uh, ahead. Can, can I um put my oar in, please? Sure can. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I I do, I do something different. I um, I naturally use a Trello board um to track what I'm doing, um, and to to make note of things that need doing. Um, and I open that up to my clients so they can actually see what's going on. So I have the, the report as, as Tim's described with what, what I've done, uh, sorry, what I'm going to do in response to the overall plan or uh, the, the latest set of numbers. Um, but I also um, have my Trello board and they can see what's going on. They can see I'm actually doing things, and that seems to diffuse all sorts of questions. Um, maybe, uh, maybe your agency wouldn't like um, having uh, showing off their underwear in such a way, but it's it's the way I work, and it seems to work very well. Excellent, David. All right. Um... Oh, let's move on. I think. Will we? Has anyone, anyone got anybody more to add? Okay. So here is one from E. Dieter Martin. Um, it's titled "How Long Would It Take?" Um, it's local SEO. How long would it take for a new changed phone number to propagate through the majority of listings? If I only changed the schema.org on the website. Um, Google business pages and Facebook. Um, the background is a shoestring budget and brightlocal.com still requires a good amount of diligent work. Yeah, just updating your stuff on sites, not going to update anything third party wise. Like if you've got Yell, Yell, um when i um, blah 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 uh you, those need to be updated um directly by them um the low tier ones can take jesus like if people have built low tier ones over the past like those can take six months you know to be found uh, and updated um I would, depending on what they have as these, these, you know, these listings, um, you may find that actually, um, uh, depending on what country you're in, um, you may find that they're just submitted to the, um, some of the aggregators like Cyclex and stuff like that you may actually only need to update once in the two or three aggregators um, and then it will propagate through. Uh, but of course, for those individual ones to be found, do take, uh, you know, can, can take quite a while. Um, but yeah, you have to, you have to update, the, the, have to update those. It's yeah. I mean, if you're using bright local, sure. Um, that will up to help update it for you. 
but you you still need to check but it's the question of google finding those depending on how low tier they are before they update okay thank you tim all right let's um go to number seven on our run list um richard hodge um he asked a question title from instagram uh, to a blog um higher folks he said that he said i grew an insta account uh, uh, to around 30k and around 1300 posts over three years a lot of them reposts maybe 50 percent uh, unique in brackets uh all content written by me i've decided i'm going to extract everything and move to a blog i have it all around 400 to 500 blog posts with unique content my thought is to launch the blog with about 50 posts just to get some some traction um brackets readership and google of course um and then drip feed the remainder at a perhaps eight per eight slash month uh, does this sound like a sound plan considering that the site uh, will have um constant um growth should i launch with um 100 instead or 200 i've built blogs but never launched with all this content ready to go this is a herculean effort and i'm racking my brain trying to figure out the most productive and efficient route to get all of these posts from instagram to the blog but that's for another topic hello uh, well um any ideas regarding that part of the welcome to uh i don't uh, you know, like, honestly I, I don't know anything about um insta uh, I don't know if you can scrape it. Uh, um, a lot of social sites allow you to download your content, don't they? Your data. Uh, does that include the content? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you could always embed your posts, I think. Um, so... Mm. I mean, one thing that strikes me as slightly odd is that Instagram is more about images and videos. So I'm not 100% sure where all the text content um, is on Instagram. Is it the comments or is the text in the image format and posted? Yeah, it's funny. The, um, Richard doesn't say anything about um, uh, about text at all here, as far as I can see. Um, and that that did cross my mind, Master. About you know, what is it? Is it is it um, is it video and um, and images? No, well, because he said post, so I'm assuming it has got a bit of text somewhere, like. Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? Because he said turning them into blogs. So I'm guessing it's an image with some text around it. Um, yeah. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Yeah. I mean, that seems slightly odd um, in that the predominant use is that you have a big image and text is collapsed, I think, or, or not even visible if you're on desktop. I think you can just see. Um, Images, even if you click through to someone's profile. So, I mean, I think it depends on the con on the content that um, they have on their Instagram account. I mean, does it make sense to duplicate that on a blog? 
are you trying to appeal to two different audiences? I think they are separate audiences. I mean, people who use Instagram sort of live their lives on Instagram. if that makes sense. So duplicating that on a blog might not be a bad idea as such. The question is whether you would reach that potential audience through the medium of blog. And that I'm slightly skeptical about. So, I mean, one way is to embed, I think, posts. He probably wouldn't rank for those if you're just embedding Instagram posts. Um, but I think ultimately it's what you want to do. Where is your focus? You know, okay, you've grown your Instagram account, you have followers, and what do you want to do with that? And what are you trying to achieve by setting up a blog, duplicating the content from your Instagram account? So I think, in a sense, it would help to know what the aim is. Yep. And I think a lot of people would be. Um, surprised to, to to hear that they, they don't own their content on, on sites like uh, Instagram or Facebook for that matter. Um, yeah. Um, I, I'm try, trying hard to see the value in, in, in it, but uh, I, I can't. Uh, I can't see it. But can see value in in Instagram account, you mean? I, I, I can't see the, 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 the value in, in ta taking um, uh, content that is published on Instagram mm -hmm. and uh, publishing it, um, say, on, 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 on a blog. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I tend to agree because I think people are finding the content because it's on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And would that same would that same content be found elsewhere? And in a sense, would people be looking for them in the first place if it's outside of Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. I I'm, I think I'd like to to understand the the logic behind this. It's it. Um, I think what you're saying, Massa, is it just fits in my thoughts. Where um, you're, you've got um, you've got a particular sort of thing on Instagram. Um, you know, will that sort of thing work on a blog? Um, and it's not just the the nature of the post; it's it's how it's found and how it interacts with its readership. Um, I don't know. Um, I think I think we need to know more. Yeah, I think the way I would put it is that you, you know it's going to be a hell of a lot more difficult to get thirty thousand followers if you're starting a blog. Starting a blog um, in Instagram, in a sense, you have captive audience of millions, people who are looking at content, and Instagram is interested in making sure that you consume as much content on its platform by whoever um, whoever the creator is. So in that sense, I think it's going to be very difficult to, let, to replicate the kind of following that you already have on Instagram using a blogging platform. You know, how, how is someone going to follow your content on your blog, are they going to subscribe to your feed, or you know, how many of the thirty thousand will do that? 
uh, now it's just very few. All right. Can I suggest that we move on? Yeah. Okay. The next one on our run list is uh, number eight. Uh, Wilco Den Brock. Um, yeah, that's the question titled, I'm still learning, so don't shoot me. Um, he said, let me see if I understand it correctly. Imagine um, low keyword difficulty is caused by only three factors. One, they do not use exactly that keyword. Two, the content about it is very poor. And three, the, the websites that do write about it uh, have a low uh, domain, uh, um, domain DR. What's DR, guys? David um, Rose, last time I looked. What was that? David Rosen, last time I looked. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Is it domain rank? Domain rank. Yes, that's me. Okay, <laughs> let me finish here. Uh, so um, he says, uh, the in, 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 in the search engine results page, I see a lot of websites with high, what, what is this DR? Domain uh, rank. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Um, man, I'm having trouble. Yeah, get um, on with it. Go on. <laughs> Read the word. If someone writes an article for local SEO with for multiple locations, which is a highly uh, difficulty keyword, but you have. Uh, the keyword multi-location SEO, um, which is a low difficulty keyword. Um, why not take a couple of blog articles, uh, local SEO for multiple locations, use the text as inspiration and rewrite it completely and voila, you rank for multi-location SEO. Um, that, 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 it, <laughs> Would that actually work? Well, the, you know, what I would say is, well, why haven't you tested it first? Um, <clears throat> as we quite often say here on a Thursday afternoon, um, you're overthinking it. Um, I, I'm, I'm not even sure I, I, I follow your logic, but let, let's 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 try and make this simple. Um, Keyword difficulty is a is a useful a useful idea for how difficult it might be to rank a piece of content. It won't tell you uh, it won't tell you for sure uh, that that key keyword um, is easier to rank for than another one, um, but it will give you a guide. But there are other variables at work. Um, there's uh, what what your other uh, what your competitors are doing? Uh, there's your the quality of your uh, your your, uh, your writing your content. Um, there's how your website is set up. There's all sorts of things, but it's it, it's like a it's like having a a signpost, um, and it says if you if you want to to write something that about this topic that is easier to rank go down this route rather than that route use these kind of words rather than those kind of words but it's the whole thing it's the whole thing you write it's that piece of content it's not individual key keywords or key phrases so it's just something a signpost that gives you a clue about what you can what you should write and how you should write it. Yes, the lesson is um, do not overthink it. Mm. All right, uh, anybody else? Okay. Number nine on our run list uh, is from Tomek Seller, who wrote a, a, a lovely comment uh, on. Uh, 
I don't know if it's amongst these questions, um, but uh, I'll point it out. I certainly point it out uh, if uh, it is. Uh, let me see. Uh, Tomek Seller is the writer. It's titled "The First Steps to Take When Setting a, a Setting Up a Blog for Search Engine Optimization." Um, he said, "I can write proper content. I know about linking. WordPress helps a lot too." Um, what about keywords slash key phrases? Should I try to focus on a few uh, that have a chance to click or generally pack posts with um, lots of different keywords uh, that match the website's theme? So don't fight over this one. Yeah. Um... The let, let's you're 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 thinking you're thinking about mechanics you're thinking about about keywords and key phrases. Take a step back. Uh, what are you doing with this blog? What do you want it for? Um, is it about some obscure passion of yours that a few people around the world will find really really interesting? Have you got some idea that you're going to get loads and loads of of of, uh, of traffic and people um, people buying things or clicking on ads or you know what what's the end point here? Um, whichever way, you need to think about the content, um, and then you use the keywords and the key phrases to give you some. You know, the keywords and key key phrase research to give you some some idea of what how to create this what the the themes for your content might be um and don't think about packing loads of different keywords or not packing loads of different keywords think about the content and then see if keywords and key phrases come naturally um if you've done your research you'll know which which ones are popular um so that would give you some ideas about what you should be creating you know if if, if this is a, a passion of yours you've probably got this idea that you could write just piles of of content about it well what what should you write um you know unless you're happy spending every waking hour churning out content you need to have uh, an understanding of what people what people might like to see so if you do your key, key phrase research you can see what people are searching on blah 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 um but yeah write content think about content think about the people who are going to read your content and think about what why why you're doing this why are you setting up a blog what do you want from it yeah another good thing just to give you some kind of idea like starting point um there's things like also asked, I think they do free trials, um, which is handy for you to visualize what people are actually asking around a particular product. So I don't know whether you do product or whether you offer a service or different or, or whatever you do. And chuck that in and then you can see and then that should give you some kind of idea on how to uh, on, on longer things, which you can put either into singular blogs or more in-depth or you can actually group a few in like an faq or other on so do you see what i mean um and that could give you a nice little idea on how to group these things cluster them um to get them really working for either a product category or a service uh, i mean i'm not entirely sure uh what 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 you you know what 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 that's for but It'll give you a good idea on what's being asked out there, what you haven't covered, and how, and you know, you can cover it. What's going on there, David? Oh, I forgot you're in the I, UK. I, I took the the dog out for a walk earlier, and there was this freezing wind coming off of the sea. Uh, well, it wasn't a freezing wind, but I, I didn't go out as if it was November because the sun was out and it was absolutely bloody cold. I, I came back in and the house felt really warm. 
um so i was sitting in a t-shirt but i've i've now uh, got over the uh, the wonderful difference between the outside and the inside and it feels chilly in here i see okay. <laughs> right let's um roll down on down to the next one if there is a next one oh wait um I, I saved this guy. I thought this was especially uh, indicative of, of, of the, the reason that we're here, Paul. Um, this is a response um, on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group um, um, by Ma Michael Martinez uh, on, on a question asked by Tomek Seller. Um, and I'm going to read, Michael Martin has wrote, uh, uh, focus on writing meaningful content that people will appreciate reading. If you're not sure about how to optimize the post right away, don't. You can always go back and tweak things as you learn more about search engine optimization. The most important goal when starting a blog is to develop the content that you yourself will want to read and recommend to others don't worry about keywords put the audience you have in mind first uh, people learn to search for the sites they enjoy visiting uh, which makes keyword chasing uh, less important so that's what michael martin is right and uh, the response from tomek seller was you sir are a fortune and it's a blessing that you are here. Uh, I wish uh, there were more people like you. Good health to you, and all of your close ones. Yeah, you know, uh, just what a what a lovely thing to say. It makes it warms the cockles of your heart. Even, even a hard man like uh, Tim Capper has got to be softened by that one. <coughs> anyway that that, that uh, I, I just thought that was one michael martinez uh, does an amazing job uh, through the week um uh, and answering questions uh, on uh, the damascio questions facebook group um and uh, he's a, a, a an integral part of what who we are and what we do all right it's thank you for watching time um time for us to go um we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again but before we go i i, I, I must thank you david uh, tim and masataki for coming back for yet another day um All right, uh, let me stop the recording.